Welcome to another fall edition of Gentle Somatic Yoga and other tools for grounding. It is so important to get grounded in the fall. And so today we are going to start by focusing a little bit on our feet. And um, in Ayurveda and in traditional Chinese medicine, um, the, the feet, um, and actually Western medicine, your feet have three arches. And they often say that the arches of the feet correspond to the different um, parts of the spine. So, you know, you have this different you know, arching in and arching out part of the spine. And so you can think of your feet in the same way. And um, so we're gonna start by really focusing on our feet and we'll do a variety of things during today's practice that will um, activate the arches of the feet as well as the um, the lowest meridian point in the body, which is at the bottom of the feet, which is kidney one. And so that's another really important point. It's an earthing point, even though it's on the water meridian, because the kidney is part of the, the water element. So if you have some supplies, um, blocks would be super helpful today. Um, a strap would be super helpful today, as well as the blankets and cushions for when we're on the ground. So we'll start by taking our block and placing it between our thighs, not the, not the widest way, but this way. And I'm just squeezing it here, just so that, um, we activate the muscles of the legs and start feeling your feet more. The thing to watch out for here is that you are not hyper extending uh, your knees. In other words, don't do that. Keep the knees slightly soft, okay? So um, for a moment, either close your eyes or soft gaze or even look down and just feel the engagement of the muscles in the legs and then notice what parts of the feet are touching the ground. Interestingly enough, you know, when a baby is very young, they don't have arches in their feet initially. Their arches aren't developed and it's not until they start to walk and use their feet that they start to develop these arches in the feet. The feet have tons of bones, tons of joints, lots of different muscles. In um, the way we're standing, the back of the foot bone is called the calcaneus. And that's a really, you know, big bone. Then you have these really thin bones that are your metatarsals that go up to the toes. And then you also have your tarsals, which cross the opposite way. So there's a lot going on in the feet, plus so many of the meridians actually start at the feet. So hopefully you are engaging the legs and noticing your feet pretty strongly. Release the block from between your thighs and just um, for a bit rock back and forth to the heels, to the balls of the feet, to the heels. So when you're on the heels, lifting the toes to the balls of the feet, to the heels, to the balls of the feet. One more time, heels, balls of the feet. And maybe just rock to the outer edge of your foot, so you're on the outside, come back, maybe just draw in so you're feeling the inside of the foot, come back to the middle, rock to the outside, back, rock in, back. And then um, if you're 
not feeling like balancing so early in the class, you could put your hand on the wall, but just go ahead and lift one of the feet and circling it one way and then circling it the other way and then maybe even just um, sickling. So again, sickling it out, sickling it in, sickling it out, sickling it in. Let's do the same thing with the other foot for circling it and then circling the other way and then sickling. And you will notice maybe some differences from foot to foot. One foot might be a little more um, flexible or maybe more able to be engaged than the other foot. And um, it's just good to notice these things. Go ahead and widen your stand. Now, if you're not going all the way down to the ground, this is where you could place your hands on the wall or on a chair or on blocks. And we're gonna do a wide-legged forward fold. And I really, again, want you to focus on your feet here. So I'm almost doing this like more of a wide-legged downward dog than a forward fold. I'm lengthening my spine. And while you're here, maybe roll to the outside and then slightly roll to the inside of the feet. Roll to the outside. Roll to the inside. Roll to the outside. And roll to the inside. And then maybe even just coming up again to the balls of the feet. Lifting up the toes when you lean back and stretch your spine. Coming up to the balls of the feet as you sort of slide forward. Coming back, lift the toes and lengthen the spine. So heel toe your way in, bend the knees a lot, lengthen the spine and come up to standing, shake things out and walk around your room a little bit. See if your feet and legs are a little more awake. 